Camera traps have been in use by wildlife researchers for the last 25 years, from the early film camera models to the latest digital photo and video traps. This has resulted in the accumulation of millions of capture records of different species across the globe, here showing examples for neotropical wildlife in Belize. Camera traps have thus been instrumental in the rediscovery of extremely rare species with limited information, rare expansions of critically endangered species, detection of rare morphs of species, range expansions of low-density carnivore species, or record wildlife presence in areas that are remote or difficult to access. With camera traps becoming increasingly reliable at consistently detecting the rare events of individual animals passing at point locations, they have become the standard monitoring tool for assessing the presence and population status of terrestrial species. So, how do we get from the detection of individuals on a camera trap, which only provides information on wildlife presence for a limited frame of 25 to 30 square meters of camera trap vision, to population assessments of species encompassing much larger contiguous areas? First, we have to define how wildlife populations generally distribute themselves across the landscape in space and time, as this will allow us to assess how camera traps can adequately sample wildlife populations. Let's illustrate this using three widespread overlapping neotropical species. The nine-banded armadillo is an extremely common medium-sized insectivorous mammal. They are solitary and only come together for mating, after which the female takes care of the young ones. They are found throughout the neotropics, rapidly colonizing the warmer parts of the United States. The white lip picari is a mainly vegetarian ungulate living in groups of 50 plus individuals, making them the main herding species of the neotropics. They are often considered the engineers of the tropical forest, as they are the only neotropical ungulate species congregating in large enough numbers to impact their environment as a single species. They are found throughout the neotropics and highly threatened by human overhunting. The jaguar is the largest cat species in the Americas, and both armadillos and white lip picaries form a considerable portion of their diet. Jaguars are solitary, with the mother-cup relation the only longer-term direct social bond. They communicate extensively with each other through scent marking in the environment, and thus remain aware of each other from a distance, forming complex social systems from afar. Jaguars still roam throughout the neotropics, but their range is shrinking. Their decline is caused by habitat destruction, prey depletion and direct persecution. So, what does this all mean for monitoring these species with camera traps? We will first present a model of general space use of armadillos. Armadillos are a species with small, predictable ranges, because they eat a predictable, prolific and rapidly replenishing food source in the form of ground insects, allowing armadillos to sustain themselves year-round in small areas. Their use of consistent small areas means that it is logistically highly feasible to study populations within a limited area of, say, 50 square kilometers. A quick and dirty calculation teaches us that 50 square kilometers of resource-rich habitat could sustain as many as 10,000 armadillos, assuming ranges of 0.5 hectares to make up for empty spaces between ranges. Armadillos don't have the advantage of easy individual identification, but assuming we can identify them using tags or other means, the following camera grid using 50 camera locations would provide ample information on armadillo use within the landscape allowing assessment of numbers of captures and recaptures of each detected individual, spatial recaptures of individuals between the different camera traps, and levels of overlap of different individuals detected at the same location. The positive ratio of large study area size to small average home range means we can sample an adequate number of individuals within the 50 camera grid area, providing rough estimates of space use from spatial recaptures. Now, setting up several of such grids in an even larger area would provide a picture of landscape variation in abundance, as it seems justified to say that camera grids are fully independent of each other. No armadillo will move between grids. If camera traps are a limited resource, these grids can be sampled sequentially, or in any order, 
as we assume time independence. The total sampling of all the grids will thus provide a true wider population density distribution. We can use integration of the density area to accurately estimate abundance and the abundance distribution. Using variable sampling regimes, we assume armadillos do not move between grids. If we were able to tag a large proportion of the armadillos present in the grids, we can check to what extent they move between the grids, testing our assumption of time independence. We now move from a small species with small consistent home range use to a larger herding species, the white lipicari. We were able to study the armadillo within a limited area and were able to use a flexible sampling regime in time. A model of space use for the white lipicari shows a very different picture. First of all, the species is a herding animal, with large numbers of individuals moving across large areas, mostly as a single unit. Parts of the herd can split off and regroup, changing local abundance and density considerably. At the local level of camera traps, this means a sudden influx of large numbers of animals with an equally sudden absence when they leave. White lip picari herds can roam across vast areas, especially in seasonal tropical forests, feeding in particular areas for extended periods when specific plant resources are seasonally available. This means our seasonal small-scale camera grids do not suffice to monitor white lip picari population processes. Dependent on the time of measurement, there is either complete absence of white lip picari or they are highly abundant. Sampling needs to be done across a much wider area for extended periods to capture the movement and abundance of the white lip picari herd. So far, we have only considered a single herd. If we want to know something regarding population processes of multiple herds across an even larger, more regional landscape, we need to sample across an even wider area. The logistics surrounding the sampling of large areas become a real issue, both in camera trap numbers and ability to maintain them. When camera trap numbers are limited, we can only sample sections of the larger regional landscape one at a time having to move camera grids around. Here, timing of the study within these smaller grids can influence results considerably, dependent on when areas are sampled across the landscape. Using a limited set of cameras across an extremely large area will reduce the capture probability of detecting herds considerably, as cameras are very sparsely distributed across the landscape. We have to keep remembering that camera traps only detect the 20 to 25 meter area of camera view. An increased density of cameras across such a large landscape will likely increase the cost of logistics, equipment and consumables beyond breaking point for any monitoring program. White lip picari equally do not have individually identifiable markings requiring capture and tagging. Furthermore, the photographs of herds do not provide information on the total herd size. Overhunting of the species will likely first result in reduction of herd sizes, not necessarily a reduction in the number of herds. Successful monitoring programs need to accurately show when herds have lower numbers as a warning signal before complete herd collapse. One advantage for monitoring white lip picari concerns the likely consistency that this species will show in annual movement, showing up in roughly the same locations around the same time every year. The intelligent peccary takes advantage of knowledge of varying abundance of plants in the environment. Monitoring programs can take advantage of this. Setting up dense camera grids at locations with high abundant food sources available at specific times. This requires a lot of pilot research and potentially collar and track studies before we can come to a streamlined local monitoring program of the species. Use of camera traps with 180 or 360 degree vision in open spaces could be used to count herd sizes more efficiently. So far, we have discussed space use for a medium-sized solitary species with small predictable home ranges, the armadillo, and a large herding ungulate with seasonably predictable large home ranges, the white lipicari. The last species concerns the jaguar, 
which we can consider a solitary species, with large home ranges, which are potentially less predictable in terms of size and extent across the year. The position of the Jaguar at the top of the food chain and its remote, complex communication system means that the spatial behavior of Jaguars is dependent on many factors. For food acquisition, space use will depend on the prey selection of each individual Jaguar, which in turn depends on the density and availability of the different prey species, and the skill and training of each individual Jaguar in terms of being able to catch the various prey species. If Jaguars concentrate on armadillo, they have to hunt frequently as each armadillo provides limited biomass. Although having to hunt frequently, Jaguars do not have to move far between kills as armadillos are easily available across the landscape. When concentrating on white lip picari, the jaguar has to search for and potentially follow the herd as the ungulates are only locally available. It is therefore very difficult for multiple jaguars to hunt the same herd as they directly interfere and compete with each other. Competition within an armadillo prey system is much lower as armadillo hunting events are relatively independent from each other, even in close proximity. Hunting white lip picari has a high level of complexity, as herds become more vigilant with every perceived successful hunting event. It will become harder for jaguars to catch subsequent individuals within the same herd. On top of the complexity of prey choice for individual jaguars, there is equally the complexity of their social system, having ramifications for their overall spatial distribution. Grandmother, mother, daughter, Female family units try to maintain individual ranges next to each other, while unrelated males compete for access to these females. This total package of factors, variably influencing the distribution of individual jaguars, can create unpredictable and highly variable population dynamics within and between neighboring clumps of individuals forming a population. Across the population landscape, we therefore have to expect a high amount of variability across space and time. So, what are the consequences of this complexity for camera trapping? The large scale at which the species operates makes it difficult to assess wider population dynamics using camera grids within limited areas. Smaller camera grids of around 200 square kilometers will provide highly variable capture records dependent on location and timing of surveys. Here we seem to be measuring local behavioral processes instead of measuring larger population dynamics, where we can use camera traps to tease out the more predictable spatial patterns of movement for white lip picari herds over time, the behavior of the solitary jaguar individual is much more stochastic, reactive and unpredictable in nature. This makes it much more difficult to assess wider population dynamics within limited areas. Only through continuous monitoring across extended periods can we assess the full spectrum of behavioral variation within such grids. To understand wider population dynamics, we have to truly cover the full landscape, with high enough camera trap density to assure sufficient capture probability for all jaguars present in the sampled area. Similar to white lip picari, such monitoring effort might be difficult to establish and maintain in terms of cost and human effort. Equally, the current model images only show 20 jaguars with 10 males and 10 females. An even wider assessment attempting to truly sample a portion of the full connected population might require even more widespread efforts. Potentially a widespread Area sampling strategy across a full year is the only means of realistically sampling the full spectrum of variation across time and space for a total population. Jaguars have one big advantage. Like many of the other cat species in the world, they are easily identifiable from their unique coat patterns, allowing accurate individual identification. This means we can easily create capture-recapture records for all detected individuals, understanding their spatial capture distribution in time and space. Now, as a conclusion, the three described species are just examples of the possible variation between species in terms of spatial scale and consequences of behavioral intricacies. The reason the armadillo is predictable is because it operates at a scale which we as human researchers consider small. It is likely that detailed intricacies at the local scale will show considerable variation that we can simply discard when working at the small 
landscape level scale for the species. Jaguars and white lipicari would indicate similar predictability if we zoom out far enough so home ranges become a fraction of the sampled area. Here we run into the logistical difficulties in terms of single research teams not being able to deal with such survey effort. The most effective level of operation is the level at which the law of averages can operate. New mechanisms of collaboration need to be established between research groups to allow the amalgamation of multiple camera trap datasets across large areas to assure monitoring of jaggers and white lipicari at the population level. This is especially feasible for jaggers, as they are easily individually identifiable, allowing exchange of photo records captured within different survey grids recorded by different research groups. The combined records from multiple camera grids covering large areas allows assessment of the level of exchange of individuals between these grids, providing quantification of frequency and distance moved at the wider population landscape level. New statistical models need to be developed for population assessments at this scale, allowing the inclusion of outcomes from multiple camera grids within a nested meta-analysis. This is necessary allowing adaptation of fieldwork logistics with analysis at the species scale of operation. Camera trapping is an extremely powerful tool for detecting terrestrial species, but it only does this at point locations. It is therefore that translation to population dynamics requires further thought on what this means for each individual species captured on camera.